Hello everyone and welcome back to Coffee Break Archaeology to my Archeo Gaming Let's Play series of Heaven's Vault. Um, so for you who don't know, I've restarted my Archeo Gaming uh, Let's Play series. Um, for people who have been a follower of my uh, blog and YouTube channel for a while now, would know I started sort of looking back at uh, video games as an archaeologist back in sort of late uh, 2018, around Christmas time, and I started sort of doing Let's Play series is back uh, sort of last year, looking at the Carbon-14 Dayton Sim and uh, Dawn of Man, which is a sort of Paleolithic civilization-based strategy game. Uh, I do plan to continue with those, but due to technical difficulties, I have lost my progress with both of those games. Um, so I am looking to uh, go back over those again at some point. And since then, I've found a whole host of other new games, such as Heaven's Vault. Um, there's also uh, Never Alone and uh, a few others, Tomb Raider, obviously. And uh, a couple of short ones, which I'm going to sort of look at in between other games as well. Some of which are very weird and some of which are quite fun. So, Archeo Gaming. What is Archeo Gaming and, you know, why is it important? Archeo Gaming is the archaeology of and in video games, and it can really be sort of broken down, or a good way of breaking it down is sort of into the following criteria, which is the real-world archaeology of video games, hardware and software. So, you know, looking at the actual games themselves, how are they produced, the consoles they run on, the technology and the advancements behind that, looking potentially into typologies, looking at controllers, looking at or a whole host of things that are associated with the playing and production of video games and video game consoles and other related hardware. Um, can actually look at, you know, real world archaeology digs, obviously the Atari um, ET game comes immediately to mind. I do plan on doing a video about that at some point, exploring what happened there and the archaeological dig which followed that. But we can also look at video games or virtual worlds as archaeological sites. So um, we can look at the game themselves, how they are created, how they are built, the stratigraphy of the game, the design process and the different layers which are involved in making the games. We can look at things like glitches or things like that as artifacts within the game. Um, but also we can actually look at the landscapes themselves within the game as well and how you know they're created, how you explore them and how you can kind of study those as archaeological sites. So we can also look at uh, sort of philosophical aspects um, around archaeology and video games. We can look at reception of games and how people have responded to them. Um, we can look at uh, you know, um, in-game um, where it's relevant, you know, games which have sort of uh, in-game depictions and uh, reenactments or real historical events. Um, we can look at, you know, again, games when it's relevant, sort of the developers' perception and promotion of archaeology and archaeologists. So games such as, you know, Heaven's Vault or um, Carbon-14, for example, Tomb Raider, uh, and, and games like that where, you know, sort of at least archaeologists or people dealing with history, you know, how are they represented? How does it represent the profession? How does it represent the people? How does it represent the history? Uh, so again, we can look at um, game development. So for certain games, again, like with where, you know, archaeologists have been consulted. Uh, again, one of the shorter games that um, I am going to do a, a, a sort of video on 
we'll definitely be looking uh, at that as well. Um, and, you know, there's a whole load of other aspects which I don't want to get into immediately. Um, again, I'm using various books, including Andrew Reinhardt, Arcio Gaming and other books to help me uh, decipher these games, as well as the uh, interactive past. Um, again, I have no affiliation with these books, but these are books that I've enjoyed reading and have sort of inspired me to sort of undertake some of these videos to explore some of these issues. But again, I don't want to get particularly bogged down on what Arcio Gaming is. I have a uh, article on my blog which goes into a bit more detail about archaeology and archaeo gaming which i'll link down in the description as well and the videos are we'll explore these as well but again they're also videos and they're designed to be entertaining video game let's plays as well as serious archaeo uh, sort of archaeology of the game but with each um video with each game there will also be a blog series that sort of um accompanies it as well which is likely to be made uh more towards the end of finishing the game or after the game uh, after we've played the game or completed the game because then it's easier to look back at the game itself um, but again we'll explore some of the ideas as well around archaeo gaming within the let's play so leaving archaeo gaming aside heaven's vault what is heaven's vault <clears throat> Let me just uh, re-bring up the description because they, they uh, do a much better job at describing it than I ever could. So, description of the story. Elia Alasra, who is who we're playing as, is an archaeologist exploring the strange region of space called as the Neb called the Nebula with her robot sidekick Six, hoping to uncover secrets of long forgotten past when a roboticist from the University of Iox goes missing. Alia begins the trail of discoveries that will lead to the very edge of her world and the ancient secret of Heaven's Vault. So Heaven's Vault is not your usual linear adventure game. Progress through the game in any order you choose. The game's fully adaptive narrative remembers every choice you make and every discovery and every action you take, influencing what happens next. Meet a diverse cast of characters who remember everything you say and whose attitude and whose attitude to you will change with how you act. Some are friendly, some are cautious, and some are out to trick you. Who will you trust? What will you find? And what will you learn? What will you risk? And what will you lose? So there is a quick description of the game based from its uh, Steam page. Um, a big part of the sort of game mechanics around this um, that they talk about is about the translation of ancient hieroglyphs that we started to look at in the last episode but um, we haven't quite got the hang of I don't think yet but they don't really give you much to work with either. So there we go there is the game so in the last episode we really just got started to get stick into the story. Uh, Alia and uh, Six um, have just made their way um, in the start of the pursuit of robotist uh, Janaki Remba, who you were asked to investigate his disappearance, and was last seen on the farming moon of uh, Mercy. It seems that he has left something behind to be found. In the last episode, we were told that it was being held by the goddess. So let's continue with the story. Uh, just trying to remember where we left off. I did actually uh, go back and rewatch my video prior to restarting this. So, so far we have, you know, found... Oh, Emmett. Good faith. Please keep it quick. I don't want to talk to you. Well, that's nice and friendly. You know, most... Uh, that is quite... Uh, That's pretty much the reception we have received at this village so far. The villagers 
do not appear to really want to associate with us in their little farm community. So last time we spoke to a lady who just, um, said that uh, Janeki left something at a statue, and we think we actually found a goddess statue previously. So... Oh, so we're missing out. That's the one thing which I did uh, criticise last time, is that sort of the text sort of randomly appears and can go quite quickly. Do you think there's more to be learned here, mistress? Shall we leave? Janaki said that the woman, the woman said that Janaki left something here with the goddess. I want to find it. So yes, that's sort of what we're trying to do at the moment. And it was back down this way. It was quite close to where we entered the um, That's a good question. Why do they build them as stilts? It's a good explore. Yeah, it's unlike flood up here, but as uh, Six said, you know, it might be due to the mud or for somewhere for animals to shelter. I think that's potentially unlikely as, you know, or to keep the animals out, essentially. So let's just head back, I'm trying to remember where it was now. As I said, I did uh, rewatch the video. So a little bit about the game controls. The game controls are a little bit um, difficult to get acquainted with. They're a bit, um, it's back this way. You sort of steer using the mouse but there is sort of very much areas where you can't sort of it doesn't want you to walk and will sort of redirect you back a little bit not too much you still have a little bit of choice but it's a bit jarring when you think you're going one way and um you end up going the other the default mouse sensitivity is a bit uh well it's, it's, it's quite sensitive i mean you can change that if you want in the options and in theory, uh, the text speed now is set quite low, but it still seems awfully quick. Now, I can't remember where this statue was. So let's see if we can find it. It was up here somewhere. I know that. Like I mean, there, I mean, obviously that bank is probably a bit um, steep to go up, but that sort of jar in motion you sort of see sometimes when I walk, that's... Um, sort of it trying to redirect you around places can i find out remember where this statue was i think it must be up here somewhere it must be someone here i can talk to how many moons are there on the Ionix Protectors? At the last time there were settlement, it was 23. Settlement count. So where was this statue? Pretty sure it wasn't this far up, but I'm not entirely sure where else it would be. Was it more? Last time I remember being able to see it from quite far off. But also the sort of the, the game sort of point more sort of pointed you in that direction to go and investigate it, so it's a bit uh So it does sort of hold your hand a little bit in trying to, to where you were. Ooh. Those pigs definitely don't look terribly happy about something. Oh, here we go. Here's the goddess. It was right here all along. I just completely forgot what I was looking for. And with that, actually, I'm just going to quickly double check something. So you may... There may be a weird pause 
So yes, again, sorry if that seemed weird. I just had to uh, quickly double check something. So we're back at this that statue again. Now this, what we may have identified as a goddess statue. Oh, and here's the secret, almost buried in the grass. A shard of crystal. Does it mean anything to you, Six? It is most curious. This moon does not contain any crystals of this type. What type of crystal is it, Six? Iolite, mistress. Valueless. Eyes broach the stone inside it. Is it the same as Venber's crystal? Undoubtedly. I'd estimate they came from the same source. So, that's interesting then. And can we find that source? With some analysis, mistress, yes, I believe we can. Time to go, mistress. Soon, not yet. Yes, I think just want to investigate a little bit more. So, uh, let's see if we can get back to looking at, bring up the hieroglyphics thing in by looking at these inscriptions. So, uh, So yeah, here are the different descriptions that we found so far. So a brooch which had a sort of a inscription on it, a passage from the annals of Mazwei, which was showed by uh, Huang, and found carved, and the um, inscription we found carved at the base of the goddess. Now, uh, Maori, just as a reminder, is the um, academic we met at the university who sent us to try and find a Janiki member, um, and she gave us a weird brooch. So again, if we click on this translation thing, here it sort of gives you each sort of section of hieroglyphs, and here are some of these sort of, um, it sort of gives suggestions for what this might mean based off runes you've seen before. So here you can look for common elements, such as this sort of um, almost lambda looking symbol here. So again, might be friend. Water snake, death, light, again, no sort of common it says related words, but doesn't really appear to have, you know, is this common sort of apostrophe looking character here, but none of the other bits are particularly common. And here, Empress, you know, here this does share some more common sim similarities. So again, this might be something or another, but let's uh, leave that for now. So again, that's all of that, and let's just exit that inscription. So we found that shard, which appears to match the brooch that we were given, which is, uh, I guess, interesting. And it unlocked a new location for us to go and visit. Robot uh, 6, the robot, always seems to be very keen to get off this moon. He keeps on asking that a lot. So uh, maybe we should leave sometime soon. Maybe that's the game's hint at telling us that we have uh, not much more to discover here. Or maybe just potentially uh, opening up another avenue that we can potentially pursue or look down. So again, why uh, why do I enjoy looking at uh, Archeo gaming? Oh, are we just about to have an interaction? No, it's just it sort of left us. That was a little auto walk thing there because it I don't think it trusts us to walk up a slope, which again is a little bit um, from a Gameplay perspective, it's a bit irritating when it does that because it doesn't really give you any warning. And it kind of makes you think maybe you're just about to enter a um, cutscene or something else like that because it doesn't tend to differ differentiate many. There are no threats at present, there's no doubt. Ease the situation. So let's continue walking this way. 
So it said he was always looking up at the sky, examining the rivers. Uh, I guess is interesting enough. Okay, so it doesn't won't allow me to go any further that way. So let's have a look at the map then. So here we're on Mercy. So maybe he's leaving a trail of breadcrumbs. Maybe that's what this uh, crystal is. So again, sorry, Archeo Gaming. Um, before I get completely sidetracked. For me, Archeo Gaming is an interesting thing. Um, an interesting exercise, both at looking at um, how different people represent archaeology and archaeologists. You know, you've got the sort of two, um, I guess, stereotypes of archaeologists. You've got the Tomb Raider, Indiana Jones, um, sort of stereotype of a sort of Tomb Raider and looter um, and uh, something that most archaeologists don't necessarily want to be too associated with, although I guess there's a more of an academic, slight academic uh, bent on the discoveries in um, in Indiana Jones. Um, and Lara Croft never really calls herself an archaeologist, really, more of an adventurer. <clears throat> um, and then there's the sort of, uh, the other sort of stereotype, I guess, is the person sitting in the dirt with a tiny toothbrush, digging for hours and hours on end, on ends just to unearth a few scraps of pottery, a bit of bone, and some flint. Um, so I guess, you know, it's interesting to see the kind of stereotypes and the sort of uh, values that people put behind archaeology uh, in games. Obviously, you can equally apply this to books, movies, uh, TV shows. And again, this is something I kind of would like to explore as well at some point both in sort of science fiction and fantasy settings and also within sort of factual settings as well. Um, and also the sort of archaeology as the profession as well as just the archaeologists. Um, to that extent as well. And then you can also look at um, archaeogaming uh, in how it sort of represents historical events uh, historical periods, which is very interesting. So you can look at various war game shooters, for example, and how they interpret events. You can look thing, look at things like Assassin's Creed and how they represent different parts of history and sort of the, the um, meeting historical characters and place settings. For example, you know, you've got the case of Notre Dame Cathedral and the Assassin's Creed a uh, very detailed depiction um, of that and how that might may have been may be helpful in the restoration of um, Notre Dame Cathedral for in the very uh, devastating fire. So I'm just gonna have a drink of water. Oh, I got a lady walking into. Good faith, please keep it weak. Quick, I don't want to talk to you. I don't think she's actually, yeah, it's just move away so we're not getting there. Uh, we're not right in the middle of the footpath. And then you can just look at uh, games in general, look at, you know, how they generate worlds, how they interact you interact with you, you know, what is the sort of story the game is trying to tell, and what does that sort of tell us about, you know, the values that um, the game developers might hold and what they were trying to do with it. Um, and how the sort of story or what whatever point they're trying to make with the game interacts with the gameplay, the console or device you're playing it on, and all those different types of things. But for me, a big part of it is sort of our, the representation of archaeologists and archaeology in games which have a heavy sort of um, focus on that. And again, extend that also to museums and museum staff, curators conservators and, and things like that because that's also another area that I'm sort of have studied worked in and are hoping to continue to work in as well um, but again that's sort of where I'm going to start and then we'll move into other games as well um, ones which maybe do not have such a uh, historical um, influence be that made up sort of histories like Heaven's Vault or um, sort of, you know, ones which have 
looking at real world histories. So we will look at other games as well and maybe actually, you know, do a history of games and their development and also of game consoles and their development. Uh, sort of game consoles as sort of typologies. So looking at game consoles, what can we infer from, you know, looking at the controllers or the devices, um, especially from the point of view of maybe a uh, future generation of archaeologists who may not have obviously all the written uh, documentation which went along with these devices or necessarily um, every all, all the uh, devices you may only components like you may only have for controllers or you may only have part of the device or again you may only have the um, sort of specifications of the device that should decide that which have um, survived and none of the actual physical components survive so we can look at it from those kind of points of view as well and again I do intend to continue sort of um, with other non arcade gaming related content as well but this is sort of you know half and half I guess is going to be my blog looking at archaeo gaming and looking at other archaeology related things because ultimately i am a big gamer oh another thing yes i know my friend janaki was here i met one of your one of your villagers she knew him she what was her name the villager she didn't say no matter, I can guess. If we had seen your friend, if he had met with an accident among us, what would Iox do? I just want to know where he is. We have not seen him. Now leave. I don't understand why. I don't understand why you're lying to me. man sighed. Your friend was here. He left in a ship. Then something exploded in the sky. So then something exploded in the sky. I don't know if that was your friend. Good faith to you, lady. Please leave us be. Maybe I should have showed him the crystal and the brooch. Maybe I might have been able to get some more information from him. Does his ship burn? Can I still go and talk to him? Do I have that option? No. Okay. So do I think there's much more that can be gained from talking to people? I haven't really explored, I don't think, this part of the village. Let's go down here and see if there's anything interesting down here. Come on, N6. Are we ready to go now, mistress? Uh, still have more to do here. For now because I do want to do a bit of an explore. It does sort of talk about you know you can take the story in any way you want which I guess is a good thing but it sort of does kind of railroad you a little bit with where you can go. I may face well looks uh that place does look like a bit of a pigsty. Haha <laughs> sorry bad jokes something under the leaves oh interesting What's underneath here? This doesn't look like it belongs here. A model. From the Holy Empire, I think. This is the goddess statue, of course. Oh, more inscriptions. Hmm. It's a broken fragment from a longer phase. So, mm hmm. We sort of imply that maybe this bit is goddess. Um, light, maybe? Okay, so not light, but goddess. So we're quite, we're quite good with goddess. So, and maybe? 
light snake. Let's go. Okay, I'm going to go with water, mainly based off these wavy lines. Goddess and goddess of, maybe. Uh, arms gently fall to suggest plenty. This comes from the same uh, as a brooch, one that Miley gave us back in Iox. Having this should be useful in pinning down where these were made. Uh, so it was worth hanging around a little bit. So again, that sort of, with that, you sort of get towards um, identifying common components, I guess, which eventually allows you to translate the hieroglyphs, which again, I'd to fair is a good way of doing it, and how very much high, how hieroglyphs were translated. Certainly, with the, the common components between uh, on looking at Rosetta Stone of um, Doric, Ancient Greek, and Egyptian hieroglyphs. Hehehe. <laughs> Mistress, I'm at a loss when I in when I look uh, look at an object. I can find out where it comes from based off radiation markers. I'm at a loss for how you do it. Not exactly. We said but that was for just um, well, archaeologist. Where does all the water come from here? There's a whole spring in the rock below us, Mistress. The soil is permanently saturated by it. Interesting. So again, I think, you know, we're probably quite safe with the water goddess theory. Obviously, the water goddess with this sort of saturation of the soil is something which is going to be very important, especially in the farming of rice and rice paddies. And what do the moons get out of being in the protectorate? Theoretically, I guess the support of the Ioxian guard. But that is largely historical. Hmm. So just a bit more context to the politics of the current uh, period. You know, you've got the, um, ooh, what's over here? Something over here? Maybe it's better to just have a bit more of explore. Definitely no robots here. No reason for Ember to come here at all. Well, that is a question, isn't it? Why did he come here? We still haven't established that. Let's approach a villager. Let's approach you. Good faith. Please keep it quick. I don't want to talk to you. So again, they're still not being particularly helpful. But I think we already knew this. Of course, I know robots. Robots are valuable. And what does that supposed to mean? Six? Hmm? Are you saying that these people can't uh, cope with valuable objects? So, again, let's just have another look. Just to see if there's maybe some other fragments. Or maybe we'll find those elsewhere. Hmm. There's definitely, I know we can go this, but we didn't miss anything here, did we? I don't think we did. Please keep it quick as well. You, yeah, you're not, you're not talking to me at all, really. You're just saying that you don't want to talk to me after saying keep it quick. Hmm. So, I mean, in terms of the actual gameplay for this game, from I guess looking at it, it's not a very complex game. You look around for the mouse and you walk with the WAS and D keys. Um, 
not very complex at all. But it does have some, you know, sort of dialogue trees to find stuff out and uh, people remembering what you said are, I guess, slightly more complicated mechanics. Dialogue trees have been very popular in games for quite a while now. And um, the hieroglyphs, I guess, is a uh, sort of deciphering. Although, you know, that as an idea has been around for quite a while. It's a bit more complex than just a sort of straight sort of puzzle scroller slash platformer slash, you know, whatever game, first person shooters that also use that kind of mechanic. Adventure games, role playing games. And again, I guess that's another archaeo uh, archeo gaming thing you're looking at, you know, how games are categorised and the types of games. And, uh, you know, why do certain games exist? As a, um, in my free time, I quite like listening to uh, Zero Punctuation by Lartsy Croshaw, because again, actually, he does sort of, in, in my view, he kind of does appreciate a lot of his sort of way he looks at games from an archaeological point of view. He often looks at the history and the development of games. He looks at um, uh, he sort of looks at, you know, things that have gone wrong in um, video game development. Um, and, and he sort of looks at it in a, I don't like uh, you know, when, when game reviewers give game a numerical st score, and I again, something like Darcy points out, it's very hard to for um, to express a complicated opinion of a game with just a score. And, you know, I very much like that way to review. And, and ultimately, we are reviewing these games as well. That is part of what we are doing. Um... You know, Archeo Gaming sort of inherently reviews the games by looking at, you know, its story, what it tells us, you know, the gameplay, how the game was made, the reception of the game, all those kinds of things I pointed out at the beginning of the video that Archeo Gaming looks at is part of sort of game reviewing. And something that Archeo Gaming, uh, something that sorry, uh, Yahtzee does is keeps his videos nice and short, um, which is something I should potentially focus on but the trouble is then with a game like this if you keep them really if you keep them sort of you know much less under half an hour then in each episode of that game you're not really doing much with it you're not really exploring the game properly oh and another part of my sort of arcade gaming thing is my continued explorations with more minecraft and uh looking at sort of um recreating or taking inspiration from historical from historical monuments such as my minecraft henge and my um attempts to build tea couch is still very much a work in progress and my building of the al kasne uh, or the treasury temple at petra all of which i've sort of posted images and stuff of on my uh, Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and on my website www.coffeebreakarchaeology.wordpress.com or whatever it is. Honestly. Need to go back to owning my own domain at some point when I have the money to do so. So tell me, do you, you know, in the comments, let me know about games that you're playing and do you like, um, have you played games with archaeologists in or that represent archaeology or history? Any that you particularly enjoy and you that you think I should play? Let me know in the comments and I will certainly have a look into those. Always looking to try new games, especially if they're about archaeology or history, especially ancient history. I know there's some interesting games coming up, uh, sort of still uh, not even in their pre-release um, phase on Steam yet, which is where I get most of my games. So 
Um, I mean, this is a this uh, Heaven's Vault is an indie game, and I think indie games are they. Th I think you know those are where you. I think you find the more things more likely to find people doing interesting things with. Um, archaeology and history i mean this is an indie game and this is i think an interesting concept i'll be interested to see where this goes a couple of the other games i've played are also indie were indie developments initially um i guess it's more possible to sorry sorry quickly aboard nightingale remember left a crystal to uh for Maui to find but what was he trying to tell her we could otherwise sail to locks to tell Mari what we've learned so far about Remba. Or potentially go to where the crystals came from. Um, you know, I think, it, you know, indie, giver, indie developers, it's much more easy for them potentially to take risks with their games. Um... Let's be tricky. Let's follow, let's follow Remba and go and explore where his crystal came from. I do like her ship, actually. The ship is very cool, sort of. Uh... And what I think I like, what I, what I quite like about, I guess, this is um, its need to explain just enough. Enough. It doesn't really explain a lot about the fact that you're kind of, you know essentially sailing through space to get from different sites to different sites. Um, sorry. The Verdant Pass, sailing to the Iolite Moon. Press any key to continue. There you go. I can't believe we're actually been going for almost 40 minutes now. And we haven't really progressed much further than when we got here. Let's go, let's go, let's go right. I have a good thing about the right river. I guess, you know, at the moment I'm, I'm trying to talk about stuff and the, <laughs> this keeps on... Uh, there are other ships on the river's mistress? Are there other ships on the river? I've not seen any. Like this, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm attempting to talk, and it doesn't really give you... Okay, there is a little better than it was earlier, but it can be really difficult to... Um... It's turning. I'll take the backspace. Turn back, right? Um, and partly doing that as well, trying to read writing and trying to sail, and also trying to talk about the game and about indie development in the game. And it's 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 quite difficult, really, to uh, with the writing to focus on so many things. But I have to say, this is a very this is a visually impressive game, especially you know this bit riding on these rivers. You know, if we just take a moment, I think we can just about spare to look around. Ah, no! I didn't say to go that way. Stupid thing. Alright, this way. Uh, Again, we can actually... No, there. Back this way. I didn't tell you to go that way either. Unpredictable currents. There we go. This way. Eh. Definitely have to fight the currents. <laughs> so this is quite an interesting mechanic. Um, the, I, the sweeping landscapes, I guess... Or oh, well, landscapes out here keeps it... I said it's very visual. 
but it's not particularly the most interesting uh, sort of travel mechanic. I mean, visually, it's really pretty. And I've got to avoid these rocks now, so I guess that does add a little bit extra into the mix. It very much reminds me of my childhood's canoeing on white water, kayaking on white water. Let's go this way. We went right last, last time, let's go left. So I guess, you know, it does bring up fond memories. But, uh, which way? There's no more arrows. Oh, so I finally had to go that way, but there's no further arrows. So it's this way. There we go, there's the arrows, I can see it now. But it's here, which is the issue, so I'm guessing I wanted to continue this way. And let's go up this way. Ooh. It's getting very twisty and turny. It's all, almost slightly, um, ooh, crikey, disorientating, if I'm honest. Ooh, there we go. It's gone all awfully stormy now. And and snowing. The vicinity of the My finders indicate the moons is somewhere nearby. Okay, how difficult can it be to find, find a moon? View possible search locations. So I guess let's go this way then. Unexplored ruin. I like the sound of that. Let's go that way then. Let's go and explore some unexplored ruins. That's a good archaeology thing to do. There's a rock up ahead. What have we found? Let's go and explore. Above the crystal moon, why would anyone come to a lonely spot like this? If it was me, I, I like lonely spots, I don't know about you. Let's go and investigate. What have we found? We have arrived, mistress. The moon below us is rich in purple eye like crystals, but there is no surface flow. We cannot land the ship. No. So this is as close as we can get. As close as you can get, mistress. I should be able to hop to hopper down, but there is no air. Hopper. The nightingale is fitted with a hopper, of course, for instantaneous travel. Ooh, how does that work? There's a source. The source is the first subject and it gets cast into the hopper's eye. The eye refracts the signal, it's focused and it's reconstituated. But how does it work? I have no idea whatsoever. Are you sure the eye light crystal came from here? Statistically certain, mistress. The moon is rich in deposits of iolite. Please wait here. What else can I do? So what he means is it's a teleporter. So do I just, let's have a look at Renber's crystal then. It's beautiful enough. I thought we might have got to play with the robot for a bit. Books, I like those books, although some of them don't look in the best condition or look like they're being particularly cared for. I mean, leaving a book, look at that. A book's laid out, open, with other books falling on top of it. Call yourself an archaeologist. Honestly, take better care of your books. Sorry. Mistress. I found something, Mistress. A tool chest. Remember hid this box down there? It was a superb hiding place, Mistress, but whether it is Rember's doing or not, I could not say. Oh, well, let's have a look then. What's in the box? I hope there isn't a snake in here. Ha <laughs> ha! Funny archaeology joke, Indiana Jones reference. Uh, well, although, if you're Tommy Pickles, then it's lizards, and Tommy Pickles was definitely one of my inspirations growing up to be an archaeologist. Tommy Pickles from the Rugrats, that is. Thick fabric. Janicky, what is this? Don't even know it's Janicky's yet, do we? Some kind of robe? 
but it's hundreds of years old, then you should probably not be handling it with your bare hands. Of actually clean hands for handling fabric are probably okay. If not, then you'll want um, vinyl or uh, similar like gloves. Related words, water, divine is not, zero, all. I'm not entirely sure how that's... Divine? I don't really see how that could be divine. Is not, similar to related words, water. Can't see many related um, similarities between these particular two words, but it's telling us it's related. But none of these are all pilgrims, maybe. This is often associated with holy or friend or goddess soldiers. Pilgrim soldiers, drinks. Speaking of drink, hello. Not really sure about that translation. Again, has anyone here played um, Heaven's Vault? How did you find it? Again, do let me know in the comments. All pilgrims follow. But the question is, why did Rainbow behind us? A sale manual very bad phones. Were you a pilgrim? I don't often choose options three, so let's go with options three. Is he on a pilgrimage potentially? That's maybe an interesting thing. Some ancient faith, perhaps, kept secrets from power by docks, but did you leave that shard by the goddess not as a clue, but as an offering? Secret for my herself. There's more in here. This is a broken glass jar. Inside it is heavily stained. Must belong to a heavy drinker. Whoever made it didn't include an inscription along a handle. Still, I think this is from a totally different place than the robe. In fact, I don't think we've seen anything equivalent to this broken jar before. So it must be originated on a site that's entirely new to us. But that's not all. There's also a book. Empty, but for some minute glyphs. How did Remember get his hands on this? The binding is in fantastic condition. This book must have been part of some ancient Curious personal. Too quick for me to catch up with. So, Empress Follow Water Crystal Place Book Song. Book of. Well, we had that as pilgrims, so that can't be pilgrims, I don't think. Future word old ancient knowledge Does this book of knowledge work? Most likely comes from the same site as the broken jar. So are these leads or are these things that Rembar was after? Please wait, mistress. I will consider the matter. So, Rembers hoarding artifacts? Somewhere no one would find them. Why was he playing archaeologist anyway? Yes, he's not an archaeologist, he's a roboticist. So what was he doing? That's a very good question. Everyone knows I'm the only archaeologist on Iox, and I'm hardly respected for it. If you were respected, would you not be assigned a robot if you were not respected? Can you work out? Can you work out where the robe was originated? Where the robe, where the robe was originated? That's making sense. Where the robe was originated? I fear so. It's not a good location, Mistress. But Professor Murray was clean, keen that we found Master Vember, and I am sure Master Vember is equally keen to be found. Unless, show me where he went. Six. I'm not exactly certain, Mistress, but I believe Remba travelled far from home into the eye of the Cyclones. 
Mm. Hmm. Interesting. I do like the timelines. It does allow me to review what you've done up until that point. So that is, I guess, good, even if you do miss some of the text. So we are going to visit, but we didn't get to look. So we, you know, there was that tech, what described as ruins, that six went in. We didn't even get to go and explore them. Honestly, what is the use of that? as an archaeologist and not being allowed to go and look in the ruins. Is there more to be found or should we set sail? Elbereth. Now, you know, I think of that and I think of Lord of the Rings, Elbereth. Elbereth Gilfornio. Let's try going into fire cyclones and let's be ambitious. The trouble with this kind of game, though, where you have multiple leading paths and potentially you never know whether you are going on a worth, whether you just. Which I guess is for fun, and it very much very much as an archaeologist, you know, are you just going down a dead end, are you going down a dead path, or are you on a path which will actually lead you into something interesting and potentially useful? And again, I am just going to very quickly check on something. Again, sorry, there was a weird um, pause there. So, the cyclones, sailing to the eye of the cyclones. Hit the any key to continue. Which one's the any key? I don't see any. I see Esk Katal. Sorry, it's the Simpsons reference. So hopefully you can at least hear the music a bit this time. Oh, it's this is very, very rapid. Crikey. Which way am I supposed to be going this time? Oh, we're going this way. Apparently, we're in one piece. Oh, void rock. We appear to be in one piece, well that's good. This is much quicker, this is a bit more engaging, it's quite it's harder to keep control of <laughs> another rapid of the ship. Oh Christ. Check it when we next land. It's slightly slower now, but lots of jagged rocks. Oh Christ. Please disregard the next turning mistress. So we want to go this way. I think it, the site of Ember's Cache may have been a quarry. Oh, interesting. We're not through it yet. Oh, crikey. Okay. I think if I actually aim at a rock, it will actually move me away. So I can't act accidentally crash, which I guess is good. But... Oh, I go to Statue of Messiah, so the stone. There's image of cyclones. We're not through this yet. It definitely does feel very cyclone y. We seem to have emerged close to the Eye of Cyclones, Mistress. View possible search locations. Okay. Another unexplored ruin. Are you going to let me go in this one? Or are you not? Okay, so this is very... Suddenly very slow, but let's sweep the sails. To, uh, oh, cranky. We're not really moving. Why aren't we moving? 
got caught up in a stopper or an eddy. Oh, God. There we go. Let's get moving again. Here we go. It would seem that we've been not down these paths before. Mistress. I see it. There's something up ahead. A moon? There's air, but it's up with her. We'll need to leave the ship here and hop her down. Please do not be alarmed. It's quite safe. So again, when he says hopper, he means teleport. The eye of the cyclones will remember be waiting for us here in the centre of the storm. Be kind of anticlimactic if he is. Or we'll further, even if we do find him, will further mysteries unfold. Oh, is this going to take us to where the intro was? <laughs> the intro to the game was set a few bit ahead. Yeah, I've said that about the last, last one of the MCU. I wonder why. I have a feeling for this one. Let's be positive. Is it a good feeling, though? Whenever people say they have a feeling, it doesn't tend to be a close one. A good one. This way. So we're going this way, that way, forward and backwards. So as we have been going for just over an hour now. Why can't I see where I'm going? I think I may call it here once I find out where I'm supposed to be going. So he said this way, but it kind of looked like he was pointing the other way, but I assumed he did actually now mean this way, as the camera is now following me. Do not sprain your ankle out here, mistress. We are unsuitably far from help. Perhaps Renbo is waiting for us just around this corner. We can hop him back to the Nightingale and this chapter of my life will be done. I think that might be a little bit optimistic. Perhaps, mistress, perhaps. We can only hope. Six is often quite sarcastic. Hold it! Six. What's that? It appears to be a building. Very unusual place for one, and it looks quite derelict, if I'm honest. Can't quite tell if that's supposed to be some kind of washing stand, or cure meat stand, or garden swing. Just down there. I'm assuming it's not a garden swing, but I thought that was funny. Buildings do not occur naturally, mistress. <laughs> well, no duh. Thanks, Six. Locked with Bob One Ruin, this whole place must be slowly peeing away from the cliff. Well, you don't say. Well, it's at this point I actually uh, paused the video because I noticed I was having a technical difficulty. I thought I fixed it, and when I came back, I actually lost the original sound for the rest of this video. It was not recorded for some weird reason. So I thought I'll do a voice over bit for it just to explain vaguely what's going on. So at this point, we're deciding to jump over the wall despite Six's insistence that the floor will fall through. Uh, but it seemed quite sturdy. I hope you are still able to get an idea of what's going on as well from the words that appear on the screen. So we decide to go and have a bit of a nose about in the ruins after sort of having a look around we notice there's actually another shelter over there that we'll or build in that will end up later so we decide to go and have a quick nose around so we start off by having a look in this upstairs we've got a few doors here to look through and we sort of have a general nosy about with some stairs there's no way through that way but what about through this door and in this door we find a uh, 
you know, quite a dilapidated what looks like a bedroom. We find a bed and an interesting inscription. And talk about, so, you know, it's not for comfort, whoever, whoever lived there, you know, the bed's quite simple. So we find a very, very long inscription that I wasn't really able to translate. I feel that, you know, maybe we should have gone somewhere else first to maybe find some more hieroglyphs to translate. But we have a go with working with a few things. You can see what I'm sort of working with on the screen. I can't quite remember what I was commenting here, but I think it was more along the lines of I just really don't know what I was um doing basically but again I, I think i also said at this point if you have any ideas for what the inscriptions might be then also please do comment in the description below so we spent some time sort of working through this inscription trying to figure out what it actually said um and we came up with oh no we're still not there yet I think I'm, I'm in an R at this point because I just, such a long inscription and we, you know, before this point we're not really, we've only translated about three or four and it's thrown not a lot of new symbols at us and it was just trying to figure out, you know, what was possibly the best fit. Um, and it seems to sort of be a sort of a run on sentence or potentially phrase quite long to be sort of scratched on on a small bit of small bit of wall and i i, I note in a minute and the game notes in a minute that it's actually scratched from a line down position as well so that must have been quite a lengthy um scroll i probably spent far too much time just trying to work on this one just one inscription um because again the, the and something I, I start to realise a bit more where, because we find a lot of inscriptions in this building, actually, that, you know, the game does give you actually tell you when you've sort of correctly translated a word by saying, you know, either you or six saying that, you know, I think I can, you know, count that as as I can accept that that's what it means now. Um, so, you know, we, we're starting to get to grips with the mechanics of, of the word as well. Which is good. So yeah, just trying a few things out at the moment. I honestly can't remember what I was saying at this point. Uh, you know, doing it, doing the voiceover is very different because I'm not actually playing the game, so I'm not sort of interacting with it in the same way. I'm sort of viewing it just like you are now, in fact, hopefully. Uh, you know, I, I spent actually, I thought, you know, I spent quite a long time here, but actually, this was only about a third of the video. But this video was much longer than I'd intended it to be. So yeah, I spent an awful lot of time of just just trying to just trying to translate this one bit really. Um, but again, I, I really didn't know what to go with. It's actually a one. I think I'm gonna in the next episode have to go back and and retranslate because I think I I now know more of the words. It's almost getting there, getting there now towards the end of my attempt to translate this particular phrase. I mean, at, at this time, I'm kind of trying to look for common elements or maybe what I think the um, the shapes might might be trying to represent here. Not entirely sure for my rationale there, but again, I'm just trying out other things just to see at this point, you know, whether any of these combinations appear to make some form of sense. But again, do you, do you have to really expect it to make sense from our point of view? You know, again, looking back from an archaeological perspective, you know, not everything makes sense to a modern, from a modern perspective or to a modern mind. So we do have to very much... Uh, also take that into account, but I imagine from a game point of view, it probably is going to make some form of sense. The sentences are there to give you clues to what's going on in the world around you at this point, or give you clues, further clues to continue in this mystery. And actually, this exploration of this house does actually help quite a lot. It fills in some history, it fills in a few other things 
and uh, quite a lot we find here. Um, so again, just having a quick look around, and then I decide to go downstairs. And here she says a very unusual thing, and Six, we find, has joined us. Um, it's good to see you again, mistress. How did you get down from that arch? I could not climb over a wall, so I just dove off the ledge. Once I had dug myself out, I found a door. <laughs> well, you know, that's what you may say. And then she says something quite peculiar. I was quite interested in, quite interested in this bookcase, and the fact that I couldn't look at the books. I was quite uh, annoyed by that. And then we find a box. Look at this place. It's like a museum. She says something pretty Beautifully made, much nicer than everything else here. Okay, there she's talking about the, the box is much nicer. But the thing about it being a museum, that's definitely, that house is definitely not like any museum I've been to. Don't know about you. So, there's something inscribed on the lid. So again, we have another go at inscribing what's on there. And here they kind of change the actual way of um, translation. So rather than dragging words now, it now becomes a sort of symbol match and exercise for this. Oh no, here it doesn't, sorry, that's later. That's in a moment. So here again I go through translating here. And here I, I think treasure and great danger, that's quite, I think, quite a good translation from a point of view of an, uh, well, a Tomb Raider potentially, or an archaeologist, you know, true treasures come with quite with great danger. Either danger to the objects, danger to yourself, or danger to what they may tell you. So here we, uh, you know, talk about, you know, potentially telling Maori about what we've found. And then we consider what do we do with it. I try and get six to open it, and here I talk about, you know, in fact it might be booby trapped, or like with a previous box, while he's about maybe a snake being inside again. That slight Indiana Jones joke, but he can't open the lid because he doesn't really have fingers, or so he says, um, which he feels quite sad about. So then I get, well, I try and I can't get it open either. So then we jump straight to vandalism, basically, and we decide to ask Six to go and fetch a crowbar from the ship which gives us a little bit more time to explore around the ship. Around the ship, around the ruin. So we have a bit of a look. And we notice something interesting over by the old fireplace. We find another cot. And, you know, maybe that someone had to move from above to below because they could no longer make the staircase, either because they were too ill or too old or suffered an injury. And then we find another inscription. Water, goddess, something, something. So again, here this is still the sort of like it must be a bit later than it sort of turns out. But the um for some other runes around it, um rune translations or hieroglyphic translations, uh, it starts to become more a match ones. I think they're known ones. So you have some known ones and then you match them to the shapes in the sentence and or in the phrase or the inscription, and then it um gives you potentially clues or options what the other ones might be. That must be in a little while. I thought it was early on, but there we go talk about it when it comes up anyway. So yeah, I kind of really just guessed with that translation. And here we find a fire poker. Might make a good lever. And at this point, Six comes back in a very weird sort of shape, having thrown himself off the cliff again, or off the ledge. Did you find... Oh, sorry, that was fast. I go with that. It was fast. Hoppers are extremely fast, mistress, as am I. I did take a moment to inform Professor Mari what, where we were. She was very interested to hear of Rembo's discovery of this place. Do you tell her what else we found? It was only a brief communication. So he's not denying it. And at this point, I think I talk about maybe not entirely trusting Myri or maybe, you know, 
is she involved in something more? She's, she's obviously not telling us something, I think. So he opens the box with a crowbar and we come and have a look. Let's see. Six. Look at this. Well, he was one who did look in it first. And there's this really long dramatic pause for no good reason, because it's not that dramatic, really. Incredible. So we find her sort of tiara-like thing, and again, she's not wearing any gloves. So again, we talk about, you know, it looks like it has um, symbols from the Empire on it. And we hypothesise that it might be the uh, sort of um, crown of Iox. What is it doing out here? Did Janicki bring it here to hide it and hide it? I think is what we eventually go for. Yep. Yeah. And then Six points out, you know, that the box has not been opened in about 500 years. But, but he must have known about it. Otherwise, why did he come here? And at this point, we still have no exact proof he definitely came here. Oh, and here's another really, really long uh, translation to make. And again, this was a bit of a guess, really. But again, here, you know, there was only a couple of things that seemed to make sense. So here, I, I think I decide to change bits of it. Although we do find out that the um, apostrophe doesn't actually stand for and, so this translation is also not going to be exactly correct. Um, but I think I st we still go with it for this one. Again, I think that's the only thing which kind of made sense to me when I was doing this. And again, I've pointed the fact out that she puts that into a pouch, which possibly can't fit it without damaging it or the pouch. She does seem to have a magic pouch, which stuff just seems to fit in magically. So we have a little bit of investigation to see what's going on uh, if any of these crates open. And then we come into what looks like a very interesting room. You know, there looks like comment, it looks like sort of a coffee brick there and some pots and pans. And they all seem to be not heavily covered in dust. And that the light's actually still to be on in this building. Which I'm assuming we didn't turn on when we got here. Unless Six did it by himself. But they still seem to be shining. So, bar the door open, and here we find, at first, what does it look like, some baskets and pots, and then I turn around and there's a painting. Swirls and flows, these are rivers. The detail, who lived here, who? Those look like ghost waves, but no... Ghost wake, but no one goes to the ghost wake. I just realised that my camera here is obscuring some of the text, so I do apologise about that. Not entirely sure why I have my webcam on at all, really. Ancient scribes don't always trouble to put in their spaces. Well, you know, don't we know it? So in here, I don't think I quite figured out. This is a point where I think I didn't quite figure out that I could. I could potentially drag these, but none of them really appeared to fit anyway. Um, so I think I was a little confused by this point because it didn't give me the option to sort of try out the different words in a sentence, and it didn't. Get, and I didn't. Oh no, I do try grab dragging it, but it doesn't. Sit, but nothing seems to fit. So I think I got yeah. Eventually realised that's what you're supposed to do, but nothing really seemed to match. 
up. So I kind of left that for the time being and decided that it's, you know, very much a um, a map to somewhere. And quite, you know, nothing, there's nothing there that I could translate currently. This is definitely a map. But not of this place, to somewhere else. So then we continue our search round the uh, round the little dwelling. And again, we spend a lot of time here. Actually, we're only about halfway through our time here. We do explore outside as well, and there's quite a few interesting things that we do find here. A door that I could squeeze through, which I don't choose yet, because I choose to go back through here and into a different room out the back here into lots of shiny axes as well that's something I come on here all these axes are very very shiny and don't look like a dust and again about the lighting and the fact that you know these lights are still on and we talk more about the ghost wake and why it's called the ghost wake the fact that uh, it's where people tend to end up or that's where it's hypothesized that people end up So again, have a good look around here, and then head out into the next room. Where again, I don't find much, but this is a sort of walk outside. To where I'm guessing Six must have actually came in from. After having thrown himself off the ledge. And again, you know, Six started to be very insistent that he doesn't want to be here anymore. So we have a quick look that way, but decide actually we want to go back into the house. We noticed an inscription, but the auto walk function took me right back into the house where I didn't want to. I wanted to get close enough to have a look at the inscription above the door. And this is where I sort of get to grips with the sort of dragging the um, inscriptions into place to try and make up the word because it does give us this point to work with all life also all live forever A blessing to keep the house safe, perhaps. Builders on Elbworth did the same. I don't think they know. No one does, mistress. So again, we do a bit more walking and a bit more exploring in and around here. Workbench, about there, they had to be self-sufficient. And then we discover something else above the door, which turns out to be a blade or dagger above the door. Again, which shares sort of eagle motif or empire tech motif, but it's quite an old dagger. Corroded. And inscribed an ancient script on it, because of course it did. So this, we do find an awful lot of inscriptions in this house. And again, here we find out a bit more about what we have correctly guessed so far. So here, because we've used words we've seen before and we do believe that all is correct. So 
It doesn't look like one we've seen before. I sort of go, but maybe it's numerical. And so I'll go for four here, as this is Empire for All, or One Empire for All seems to make the most sense. But the game doesn't give me any other hints apart from that. So now we go back um, and have a look and decide to have a look through that uh, other door or doorway that was blocked up previously. I also apologise that my sort of uh, camera appears to have slipped down by this point a little bit. I'm sort of leaning to one side so I'm not quite so centred in the frame so again apologies for that. So we go out and find this little garden area immediately drawn to the um, the clothes or the cloth and the patches which I joke being you know little excavation pits, little sand pits to dig in or maybe some garden plots or the fact that they're trying to grow something. Bone dry cloth is, and that's all we say. So we have a look here. Garden beds. Something must have been able to grow here once, though I can't see. I can't see it now. And we have a little wander, a little explore to see if there's anything else possible. And then just as I walk down here, down along here, and as I turn around, I start to see something in the other corner. But just having a quick investigation here, and as I walk down here, definitely something over there. So let's go and have a look. And as soon as I saw this, I was saying, you know, this is almost certainly a grave. You've got a little grave marker there, you've got a mound of earth, some stones. That's what I'm seeing. Some kind of marker. Something hanging. So we look at what's hanging on it. Looks to be a necklace with uh, some beads or something around it which may be uh, ceramic but I'm not sure. And then we have a look at the quote-unquote ancient wood that seems very old indeed and that uh, it has an inscription on it. So again we have a look at the words So we'll go for be joyful with beyond. I think we eventually go with with death as the option or thing which seemed to make the most. Oh, sorry, in death. Sorry, not with. As making the most sense. And then say this is a grave. Well, yeah, that's definitely what I was thinking. Is pretty much as soon as I saw that very trademark of a grave. You have a central feature to mark out the burial area. You've got a burial area contained within, in this case, what looks like a garden bed, maybe a reuse of a garden bed, or maybe they just decided to use, reuse the same art asset because they're lazy, or just because they thought it looked good, and with a mound with some stones on it. We, bri we briefly investigate that rock because the cracks there look like maybe they might have hid something, or maybe there are some more inscriptions like we found in similar areas so far in the game. But then we decide to squeeze back in. You found a grave, mistress. How did you know? You insist on talking to yourself, mistress. All good archaeologists talk to themselves, that's a fact. For example, for this entire almost two hours, I was essentially, well, I was talking to you, the viewers, but since uh, you're not physically there, I am essentially talking to myself. For almost two hours. So at that point, we're still only about two thirds of the way through our little visit here. I decide to go quickly back inside. And we talk about maybe the connections of the site and how it's connected potentially to elsewhere. And, sis, and uh, Six is insisting, or trying to insist, on that we leave, but I've not done exploring yet. For example, there's, or for in this particular instance, we are going to look at 
this um, abandoned structure a little bit. And we also find part of a uh, water channel, which is obviously long since dried up, and some more inscri in, uh, inscriptions for us to try and translate. Another sort of drag and drop exercise in our hieroglyph translation bonanza. So again, there's some here that we become, I think, more certain of. But also some things don't appear quite to match. <clears throat> so here we become almost certain of what of, of water, but not of and. And we actually change it from being and to being for, I believe. Or of, no, of, sorry, not for, of water of life. We eventually translate this as, does water of life work? That's generally the, the game's way of saying that's not necessarily what we mean, um, but sometimes it does appear to be that's what I mean, and you know, you just. So, down here, I thought I saw something else sort of shine up around here, and then I try and figure out if there's a way to get across along this way, but there doesn't appear to be. So, then we head back, or oh, try and go down there, which again is a no show. So, we then try going around the other end. Well, we do actually find a way of getting across the uh, little water channel or ravine. And we approach the little hut and we get a bit sidetracked. I know we're still trying to figure out whether we can get down there yet. Spent far too, tired, too long trying to discover actually I can just walk across these rocks. But again, it's not immediately obvious these form a path. That is the sort of thing with this game. It's the areas that you can and can't walk aren't necessarily clearly defined. So we get a bit distracted by some smoke. Obviously uh, reasonably recent or potentially recent as it is still smoking. Turns out to be a ship. Here you know, I kind of um and ah about whether I'm going to look at the ship or go back and look. At the, at the little, at the other little sort of hut or dwelling, so I got distracted. But again, as I walk back towards here again, I think we get interrupted by E6 for another time, saying, "Have, yeah, have you finished here yet? No, I haven't. Stop bothering me, Six. I'm still looking. Calm down. He obviously doesn't like this place. Sand getting all in his robot parts or something." And also, I'm commenting here also about it, the fact that, you know, this has been going on uh, for over an hour and a half by this point, and that I should really stop, but it's it's drawn me in. I, I was like, do I leave this exciting thing to next video? But no, I do decide to go ahead and explore. So here we look at some of the wreckage, sort of blackens. Presumably the ship uh, was um, burning as it crashed, still burning. And we find bits of the hull. And here, you know, although it doesn't say that, you know, to begin with, it's not sure we're talking to Six, we've just been talking to herself. And he says he must, Six being the massive buzzkill he is, and bringing us down, saying that Janaki must have been in it when it crashed. Which, again, is probably a good hypothesis, but, and here we do uh, see what's under here. It seems to feel something and say, we hope it's not an arm. It's like, yeah, that would be rather gross. But instead, we find a telescope. Carved and, of course, from the Empire period. Or just before the Empire, around about the time of the Empire period. And again, with an inscription on it. So again, we have a look at some of the characters. And we do the old drag and drop.
And again here, we find out that maybe that's not old, or is old potentially, sorry. So we, we accept that in now, that that's the symbol for in, so we've got that to work with. But old is still not correct. Okay, we go for pilgrims. They go in heaven, God's pilgrims flourish. A device used for watching the winds and flows of the rivers, invaluable if you do not have a robot. So again, there we talk about possibility of links to other sites and about frequent visiting fe frequently. We examine more of the record and think it must have burnt for days. Well, it still is burning. Still in the process of doing so. Just come over here, investigate the channel a bit more. Trying to find the text, the text prompt. <laughs> Out the channel must come from under this point, and six point out for work at that you know the spring is dead now, and you're breathing the last of the air the moon has to offer. Janaki is not here, mistress, neither is anyone else. Are you ready to go yet, mistress? Very, very insistent. I'm starting to trust him less and less, and less really. He's very, very insistent about certain things and about wanting to leave. So again, here we just have a bit more of a look around and possibly think about maybe could we get down there and kind of have a bit of explore about that. But um, that's something I decided I couldn't find immediately. So I would say that for the next episode to still explore that. But I still have a little bit of a try. See if there's a way down there. Um, but then decide to head back to have a look at the um, second building we found and have a look at what is in there. Oh, actually, that's fine. I try around this way first, see if there's any immediate a way down. But there doesn't appear to be. I do check around and just see if there's anything that might text hint prop or something um, prompt. But no, we decide to go back out and have a look at the building. Six not interrupting us as we go through the bit this time. So we notice that there's a inscription again above there. And again, something that to try and translate. So I think maybe Emperor's work. Live. So we're certain of Emperor's now. And we're sure of live as well. So we've managed to correctly translate what we think We've definitely got two of those rooms. And then we go for forever. That will do for now. Emperor's here. 
what were the emperors doing out here? Well, that's a good question. And then we investigate what appears to be a little shrine. We recognise that it's the same statue from Mese, the goddess of either water or harvest. Or both. And that maybe Remba found it and bought it here. And here I say this must be worth something. And here I laugh about the fact, you know, again, sort of typical archaeological stereotypes. And, uh, you know, what it's saying about archaeologists that are all just a bunch of tomb, tomb robbers. But we decided to go with, you know, should... Uh, Hopefully it will tell us something more. And again, there's an inscription on the bottom. And again, she's not holding that particularly well. And she's still not wearing gloves. Goddess of... The little tick, we've now decided, the sort of apostrophe is definitely of. There's only one word less to discover. And I think we go with harvest. Again, I'm not entirely sure what necessarily I thought why that would be the best choice but it still seems to fit looking at it none of the other ones associated uh, with what we've found so far this seems to be the best sort of theme thematic option so then we look at the stone itself the shrine but it's not from the same as the moon that they're on and it is as it's as old as build, older than the building. The buildings are significantly sorry. The buildings sorry are older than the pillar. Bought let by a late occupant. And again, this isn't. It doesn't. It's not obvious that we're talking to six here, but we are talking to six and not just talking to ourselves. Whatever it is, who the original occupant moving it to the moon must have been difficult. So I so wanted to. But I, something just, I just couldn't bring myself to put ritual, to click on ritual objects just to, <laughs> so maybe an important possession. But we find out that, uh, we ask if the stone was from her say, no mistress, definitely not. So it's not from there either, the stone is from somewhere else. Question is, if Remba did bring... It. Oh, this is something else intriguing. I was like, here, I was wondering, you know, what's in here? Um, uh, it appears to be a very dark hole. Um, so here I wonder whether there's a torch maybe on the ship ruins. But I said, that's going to have to wait for next time before we explore that as well. Or even if it's a place to explore, maybe it's just a... A, a bit of a red herring, maybe. I don't know. So here I sort of talk about the fact that, you know, how long we've been going on for now and that I should really wound this up. But I start doing that and then this comes up. I would estimate the buildings have been here for at least 700 years old. How do you know that? I have been observing the rate of reverend and so forth, extrapolating from the building. It's older than the empire. So... On that note, I move slightly further away, just in case I interact with anything else, or something else pops up. And then hit the uh, pause button. So, and again, I hope I'll more or less repeat what I said then here, that, you know, um, that was episode two. Sorry for slight technical difficulties, and that you had to put up with me doing a voiceover uh, for almost a third of the video. Um, but I hope you enjoyed episode uh two and uh we did a, i did a little bit of a rundown of what we found so we were when we were on messe we found a shard of um crystal and uh, a couple of inscriptions which led us to track lead us on the trail of remba we first encountered our first ruin which i did not get to go in which i was most uh, displeased about but six found a box with a jar a book and some cloth which led us to go into the Cyclone's Eye Moon, which was very treacherous, you know, very fast flowing, rapid to get through there, lots of jaggedy rocks and so forth. So we flew through that and we ended up on the moon. And there we found the 
uh, crown for dagger, the necklace for grave, the painting, the wall painting, and the um, shrine, the goddess statue, and potentially the crashed ship of Renbar, and maybe where he's gone. Is he still alive? That is very, that's a very good question. Um, but no, that really brings us to the end of this episode, so I'd just like to thank you again for tuning in to this episode. And uh, but I'm sorry, I'm going to try and keep the episodes in future a bit shorter, closer to 33 minutes, 33 minutes, 30 minutes to an hour. The last one was about 33 minutes, um, just because I don't think you want to hear me waffle on for quite so long. But again, I'd like to thank you very much for tuning in to this episode. And until next time, take care.